Okay, finally time to look at some source code for a binary search tree. So the source code that I'm about to show you can be found at the following link. The link should also be in the description at the bottom of this video. Please like the repository so that other people can also find it more easily. And now let's dive in. Alright, here we are inside the source code for the binary search tree. This source code is written in Java. Okay, so first thing you will notice is I have a class representing a binary search tree and it takes as a type anything that is comparable. We need things that are comparable so we know how to insert them accordingly within the binary search tree. So to start us off, I have a few instance variables. Actually, only two in fact. Uh, one to keep track of the number of nodes in the binary search tree, and another one which is the root of this binary search tree because this binary search tree is a rooted tree. Next, I have a private node class, which contains a left node and a right node, as well as some data of type T. And that type T comes from uh, here. So it's some comparable type T. Okay, next I have a method to check if our binary search tree is empty. It simply checks if the size is zero, and size simply returns the node count, which gets either incremented or decremented as we add or remove elements. Okay, here's the public method to add elements to this binary search tree. I also have a private method down here, as you will notice. And I use the private methods to do the recursive business and the public method to just check if the element is already contained within the binary search tree. This insertion method will return true if we successfully insert a new element into the binary search tree, and it will return false if there's already something inside the binary search tree. So elements have to be unique uh, inside this binary search tree. Okay, so supposing uh, this branch doesn't get executed, um, meaning the element does not already exist in the tree, then we're looking at this branch. And I'm saying, okay, add this new element uh, to the binary search tree recursively, and also up the node count by one, and return true because, well, this element doesn't yet exist. So let's look at the recursive method now. So our base case is that we found the null leaf we want to uh, insert our element at. So we would create a new node object with two null children, but with the value of the element we want to insert. Otherwise, we're in this branch, and we choose which subtree we want to place our element inside. So either it's going to be the left subtree, the first branch, or the right subtree, the second branch. Okay, now let's look at removing. So here's the public method for removing, and I'm only going to remove the method if it exists within the tree. So I check if it's within the tree before, otherwise I'm just going to return false, meaning we have not removed anything from this binary search tree. And if it is contained, then I'm also going to decrement the node count. Now let's look at this recursive method to uh, remove the node. So this recursive method uh, simply has a normal base case, if it's null, return null, and in the first step to removing a node, we first have to find it. 
And we know it exists because of this check. We know that our element is within the tree, so we can remove it. And that is these two cases. So this is like the find phase I was talking about in uh, the later video. So I get a comparator value and I check if it's less than, so we're going in the left subtree, or we're going inside the right subtree. It's going to be one of these two cases, otherwise uh, we found the node we want to remove. So this finds the node, and here's where we do the actual removal. So I talked about four cases in my slides, but in fact you can think of it uh, more or less as uh, three cases, even two cases, because two of the cases are very similar. So the singleton case, where there's only one node, it's really that, that can also be thought of as a left subtree or a right subtree case. This case is the case where the left subtree is null, but the right subtree is not. And this case, the right subtree is null, but the left subtree isn't. And this case down here, which I'll get to later, uh, we have both subtrees. So let's, let's go to the very top. So if we only have a right subtree, then I'm going to say that the successor node is just going to be the root node of that right subtree. So uh, node.right. And then I return that. And I also destroy the data uh, within this node and the node itself. Similarly, for the other case where I only have a left subtree, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach into that left subtree and grab the root node. And I'm going to return that node. And I'm also going to destroy this node because we know we don't want it anymore. So th those two cases are fairly easy. Now let's look at the case where we have a left, a sorry, a left subtree and a right subtree. So as I mentioned in my slides, we can either find the largest node in the left subtree or the smallest node in the right subtree. And here I find the smallest node in the right subtree. So I go down into the right subtree and I dig left. And this is the node, or the successor node if you will. So we copy the data in it and then we recurse and call ourselves to uh, remove the successor node. If you wanted to find the largest value in the left subtree, then you could just uncomment this code and it would do just that. So that's removing in a nutshell, and I also had these two helper methods to do a dig left and a dig right. Moving on, I also have this method that checks contains of an element. So given an element, it'll return true or false depending on if that element is within this binary subtree. And this is very simple. Um, this is equivalent to the find phase. If we reach a null node, we definitely know that that element doesn't exist. Otherwise, get our comparator value, which is either going to be less than if we need to go into the left subtree, meaning this case, or uh, greater than zero if we need to go into the right subtree, or if we found the element, then uh, that's the zero case, and we're in this case. So pretty simple. Uh, just as a bonus, I also threw in uh, a height function. So this will calculate the height of the tree. It'll do so in linear time. Height we'll call the uh, private recursive uh, height method. And all this does is it's fairly simple. So if we reach uh, a leaf node, we're going to return zero. Otherwise, we're going to return the maximum height 
of the left subtree or the right subtree because one of our subtrees might be greater than the other and that's going to be the one that we want the height from. When every time we recurse we add plus one so this corresponds to a depth. So the biggest depth is going to be whatever the height of the tree is if you want to think of it that way. And now for our traversals I have uh, created this method called traverse and what it does is it takes a, a tree traversal order which is an enum type I'm going to show you in a minute and and that's an order and then I, I pick whichever order you give me and I return an iterator for that particular order I want to traverse so if you tell me I want to traverse this binary search tree in a pre-order fashion, then I'm going to return you um, this iterator, which is this method. If you want to traverse the tree in order, I'm going to return you this uh, in order uh, traversal iterator. Uh, let's have a look at what this uh, tree traversal order is. Um, let me open that up right here. So that is simply um, an enum type you can see right here. Um, so it's either one of these four things. It's pre-order, in-order, post-order. Um, so n nothing too crazy. And I decided to do these traversals iteratively um, so that you don't have to do them recursively which would be uh, slightly slower and perhaps less convenient. This is more flexible, although I don't really want to dive into the code because it is fairly nasty. Um, if I just open up, say, the in-order traversal, then it does look pretty gross. I have to maintain a stack manually, and I have to check for concurrent modification errors, etc., etc., etc. These are actually great interview questions, like how do I do an in-order traversal iteratively, or how do I do uh, a post-order traversal iteratively, and so on, so on. So, so those are definitely great to practice. If you want to actually see what's hidden inside these methods, just go on the GitHub repository and uh, have a look. But I I showed you guys how to do uh, tree traversals in uh, the last slides. So you should be good to do that. Most of the time you do it recursively anyways. I just want to be a bit more fancy and go all out iteratively. So this is about it for the binary search tree. Guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, drop a comment. I'll try and get back to you. Uh, I do read them. <laughs> okay, uh, ciao now.